and oft escape the tempter's name by thy return, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, thy wings shall my petition bear to him whose truth and faithfulness engage my waiting soul to bless and sentiment me seek his face believe his word and trust his grace I'll cast on him my every care and wait for thee, sweet hour. Everyone standing. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, may I thy consolation share till from Mount Lofty high, I view my hope and take my flight. This road of glass I'll drop and rise to see the everlasting prize and shout while past. Through the air, farewell, farewell, sweet hour of prayer. All right, wonderful. Praise the Lord for that sweet hour of prayer and just what God does in our hearts, in our hearts even during those times. And thank the Lord for that. Good to see everybody tonight. Thank you for being faithful. Let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Let's make sure we pray for our pastors in a special way as he's out ministering um, and just that God would use him in a, in a miraculous way. So let's go to the Lord prayer tonight. Father, thank you for this time. God, that we have to come to your house. Lord, I thank you for all that you've done in our hearts this week and uh, just Sunday and the blessing that that was. And even tonight, Lord, just the song service, thank you for ministering and the way your the songs that have been written minister to our hearts, Lord. And God, I pray that you just help us, to, our hearts to be ready for your word tonight. Lord, I do pray for our pastors. He's away. God, I pray that you fill him with your power. Be with him, Lord. Strengthen his voice and uh, just help him and use him in a mighty way. Thank you for all those that are here tonight and faithful to your house. Lord, I pray for those that weren't able to be here tonight. I pray that you just be with them. Thank you for all that you do for us, Lord. I pray that you just guide us and direct us. Help us to glorify you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Maybe see, we got a few announcements. Uh, we're looking forward to this coming Sunday, June 27th. Pastor and Mrs. Yoder will be with, Glenn Yoder will be with us, and we are looking forward to them. Very much a delight, uh, a pleasure just to listen to, but just an encouragement to us. And uh, July 6th to the 9th is junior camp. Saturday, July 10th is a men's prayer breakfast and ladies' fellowship in the evening. Uh, July 11th, we've got a couple of tour groups going to be with us. Commonwealth and Providence will both be here that, that day. Uh, June, July 12th to the 16th is teen camp. And I think I've caught most of the teenagers, but there's a registration form on the back desk. If you could get that filled out for me. I need to get them sent in uh, probably this week. So if you there were pre-registered, we just need the final information for that. So fill that out and give it to me. I appreciate that. Um, on the back board, there's a sign-up list. For this Sunday is Rodeo Sunday, all right? So encourage the bus kids to dress up in their cowboy, cowgirl outfits, and there'll be uh, some prizes for the best-dressed ones. But there is a sign-up list on the back. Um, ladies, if, or you might check that before you leave tonight, and uh, just hot dogs and chips and drinks, just uh, simple things like that. So if you could help us out with as much of that as possible, that would be a blessing. And then, uh, so we'll be doing the Rodeo Sunday this Sunday. And then um, I do need to meet right after the service and help remind me, but I do need to meet with all the bus captains real quick right after the service. Uh, probably meet down in Miss Darcy's room 
and we'll do our prayer time and stuff down there. I need to run over a few um, special things for Sunday, so if you could meet me down there, and that would be a blessing. Parents, if your child will be a new student in Blesso Baptist School this fall, and you have not received an enrollment packet, please see Mrs. Ross tonight. So uh, please, please see her tonight. And if you have not yet paid for junior camp, please turn in money and registration as soon as possible to Brother Young, and that will be a blessing. All right. 374, number 374. Sing your first and last verse. There's a call comes ringing on the restless way. Send the line, send the line. Their souls to rescue, their souls to save. Send the light, send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine forevermore. Let us not grow weary in the work of love. Send the line, send the line. Let us gather jewels for the crown above. Send the line, send the line, send the line. The blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine forevermore. Amen. 384. 384. The service of the king. 384. I am happy in the service of the king. I am happy, oh, so happy. I have peace and joy that nothing else can bring. In the service of the king. In the service of the king, every talent I will bring. I have peace and joy and blessing in the service of the king. I am happy in the service of the king. I am happy, oh so happy. Through the sunshine and the shadow I can see. In the service of the King, in the service of the King, every talent I will bring. I have peace and joy and blessing in the service of the King. I am happy in the service of the King. I am happy, oh so happy. All that I possess to him I gladly bring. In the service of the king, in the service of the king, every talent I will bring. I have peace and joy and blessing in the service of the king. Amen. Brother Max, would you listen prayer and sing for offering? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, uh, your Lord, for letting us be able to stop in the middle of a busy week, your Lord, and just uh, come and hear your word being preached and teach, your Lord, and please help uh, preach your receipts when we preach teach. Give them the word to speak, your Lord, and let there be no distractions, your Lord, and uh, uh, just uh, please come and meet with us, your Lord, and if there be somebody that here that uh, has to make a decision or need to get saved, your Lord, that they wouldn't leave this building without doing it, Lord, and just... Um, uh, Bless the offering in Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Jocelyn, appreciate that. Good job. Great job. It's hard to believe. Uh, I guess I've been doing the, with the kids, been working with kids, the kids here for quite a while. And you just, I don't know, I guess a lot of the older folks, you experience this. You, I mean, I guess you watched me grow up. So uh, it's kind of a scary thought, but, uh, you know, you just watch kids grow up and, and allow, allow God to use them. So thank you, young people, for having a tender heart for that. We're going to Job chapter number 38. Job chapter number 38 to start with tonight. Job chapter 38. When you find it, if you'll stand with reverence for the reading of God's word with me. Job chapter number 38. The Bible says, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened, or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy, or who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth, as if it had issued out of the womb? When I made the cloud the dark garment thereof, and thick darkness a swaddling band for it, and break up for it my decreed place, and set bars and doors, and said, Hitherto shalt thou come but no further, and here shall thy proud waves be stayed. Let's pray tonight. Father, thank you for this time once again. Lord, I pray that you uh, be with my mind tonight, be with my, my lips. Lord, I'm, I'm not worthy to stand here. God, uh, there's much better people for that. But Lord, I pray that you would take what's on my heart, what you've given me, Lord, and just uh, help me to convey it in a way that would be pleasing to you. And Lord, help me to only say what I ought to and and not say anything I shouldn't. But God, above all, I pray that your folks would be helped here and that the word of God would help them. Father, I pray that you would be honored, that you would be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. I've, uh, I've honestly, I've started reading in Job. Now, Job's kind of uh, one of those books that, you know, you read it through during your Bible reading. And the first couple chapters, this is just me. This is going to show my carnality. Um, the first couple chapters are kind of interesting. And then you've got this, like, 30 chapter space in there where they're basically arguing back and forth. And that really hasn't ever interested me a whole lot. I read it because it's in my, you know, check off the list thing. Uh, but then I kind of get through it. But I was reading and I kind of got to the end of Job. And this is where Job, where Jehovah starts talking to Job. And the last few chapters here, I've honestly, I've done a lot of reading on it. And I've lot of, done a lot of I guess, meditation on it, just thinking about it, mulling it over. And uh, so we're going to talk about these last three chapters or four chapters here. And um, But there's a, a one verse here at the end that I want to I pull out and I want to show you that uh, I want to kind of maybe just teach a thought, uh, a lesson tonight on. But uh, I want to talk tonight about hearing or seeing, hearing or seeing. You know, many times in life we, uh, we hear a lot of things. We all learn a lot of things. The older we get, the more knowledge we have attained. Now, attaining knowledge and keeping knowledge are two vastly different things, right? I mean, most of you at some point learned how to do, you know, algebra type things or, you know, the, the higher math things. But unless you use it on a daily basis, we've pretty much forgotten them, okay? That's what we have calculators on our phones for, okay? We I, I, seriously, I, if I have to figure square footage for anything, I don't write it, get out a piece of paper and do it. I get out my calculator and do it. I have a calculator now that um, it's a construction. It's actually a construction calculator. I don't have to figure angles. I don't have to figure anything. I just punch in a few numbers and it tells me exactly where I got to cut the board. And it's really sweet. I love it. Uh, I don't have to remember all that stuff. I got a little thing that'll do it for me. And so that's nice. 
And, but we all learn a lot of things. And as you're growing up, young people, you're going to learn many, many things. And I want to say this, don't ever discredit something that you're learning because you may not know what things you need to know in the future and what things you don't need to know. Well, I'll never use English. Well, usually those are the people that end up, you know, having to write or have to, you know, do a lot of things where they're typing a lot and spelling. You know, the worst thing is to have, you know, I hate going past like a church and they got something on their sign and it's misspelled. That really drives me nuts. Uh, you know, or a store, you know, and it's like, okay, if it's McDonald's, it's one thing, but you know, a tax business and it's misspelled, you should know better. Um, but so don't ever discredit things that you're learning. But as we gain, as we learn things, we gain knowledge. And if you go to the book of Proverbs, there's several different things that are in Proverbs and knowledge is one of those things, uh, character traits or um, things that you can gain. Knowledge is one of those, but I would say that knowledge is simply facts. Okay. Knowledge is facts. All right. Uh, you know, that the sky is blue, you know, that's a, that's a fact. Okay. Except when it's cloudy. All right. But generally the sky is blue. Okay. So that's a fact. Uh, you know, one plus one is very good too. Uh, that's a fact. Um, and so we, we gain knowledge, we gain these things that as we get older, we, we kind of put in a database or whatever. But and most knowledge comes from, I would say, a couple different ways. Most knowledge comes from hearing. So you are instructed in the knowledge or maybe by reading yourself. So you read about it. Uh, you know, used to, they did not have YouTube. All right. You couldn't watch it. It was, you got a manual, Brother Young was saying uh, last Wednesday, you know, you get the Haynes manual and you read about how to fix your car, okay? That's how you do it. So you either watch it or you, you read it or you hear it. You know, as you sit in a classroom, uh, those of you that are in an ACE, very much of your learning is a reading learning. Uh, traditional classroom, you hear the teacher, but it's still just a fact, Okay, it's a fact. And so as, as we learn all these things, we learn we are instructed how to read, we are instructed how to write, we are instructed how to do math, science. This is all good and knowledge is important. We learn a lot of things that are very, uh, I was talking to the teenage young men on, on visitation today, there's a lot of very irrelevant facts that we learn. Um, I, I seen the other day about our universe, okay? Um, okay, I know that there's a universe. I know that there's stars in the sky. I know that there's even constellations. But I really don't care what they mean. Honestly, I'm just, and maybe if you're a stargazer and you just, that completely offends you, I apologize. But I mean, I think the sky is beautiful, but I don't sit out there for hours trying to, you know, figure out new galaxies and new constellations. And I, I, that's not, that's not me. Okay. Um, but I, I was reading about this star, okay? They just found this star. They found it. Icarus, 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 I-C-A-R-U-S, all right? Now, how many knows what a light year is? Or I've heard the term of light year. It's how far you can travel at the speed of light, okay? Which is really fast. I should have written it, written it down, but I didn't, all right? It's 5.88 trillion miles. That's what a light year is. 5.88 trillion miles. So if you basically, if you were to get on the, the space shuttle discovery, which goes like five miles a second, okay, which is pretty fast, um, it would take you 37,200 years to travel one light year. Okay. Now for me, you know, I barely, I mean, around here, I don't get above like 55 miles an hour, okay? I don't drive very, that fast. Uh, sometimes 60, depends. But I, I really don't. I, I'm not, I don't drive real fast. So that's, that's hard for me to even comprehend, okay? But this star is 9 billion light years away. Now, how they found that, how they saw that, and how they determined how far away it was is beyond me. So to me, is it a fact? Could be. Is it relevant? 
No. I don't care about this star. I mean, I really don't. But you know, there's some people that that's, I mean, they live their life for that, okay? But to me, that's just a, an, an irrelevant fact, okay? Uh, it is important to have knowledge, but not all knowledge is good. Now, why don't you listen to me? You know, just because somebody says something and just because it's out there doesn't mean that as a child of God, we should know it, okay? You know, young people, there are some things that you ought to be simple in. That means without knowledge. You know, the Bible says in, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, and of the tree of the knowledge of what? Good and evil. There's two knowledges there, okay? There's a knowledge of good and there's a knowledge of evil. And there's some knowledge, young people, that and, and adults, we have no business knowing about, okay? There is a knowledge out there that is evil, okay? And so not all knowledge is good. Uh, there is a knowledge that of good and there is a knowledge of evil. The knowledge that we get needs to be filtered through God's word. Once we have knowledge, it is important that we understand what that knowledge can do for us. Um, understanding, the word understanding really simply means to separate mentally. It means basically to look at it and to take it apart mentally. That's what, what the word understanding means. So, you know, you look at something and you say, okay, I, I, use, I was talking to the young people tonight. I was like, all right, you look at your washing machine and you know that you put clothes in your washing machine and you know that hopefully you put soap with the clothes in the washing machine and you turn the dial. And pretty much the washing machine does everything for you. Now, there's some late, some of you in here might remember the day, you know, you got the old ringer washing machines and you had to scrub it by hand. Well, not anymore. You know, for most my generation and younger, you put it in the washing machine, you turn the dial, and it does everything. Okay? But as a dishwasher, I'm not a dishwasher repair person, so don't ask me. But if I was dishwasher, clothes washer. If I was, I would have to not just understand, okay, this is what the clothes washer does, all right? But I also have to understand how it does it. Now, one is a knowledge. One is knowing this washes clothes. The other one is understanding that says, I know how this washes clothes, okay? That's the difference. That's understanding, all right? Can I have three, uh, Luke, Travis, and Donald. Can you guys help me? All right. So we've got three different things. And if you go to the book of Proverbs, you'll see this. All right. First of all, we got knowledge. Okay. Now this is just facts. Knowledge is facts. Those are things that you learn. All right. Now, like I said, there is good knowledge and there's evil knowledge. And we have to be careful that we filter all of our knowledge through, the, through God's word. Okay. There's no sense in us doing uh, things that we learning about things we shouldn't learn about. But then we also have to understand. All right. So we have knowledge, and then we have to be able to separate mentally that knowledge and be able to say, okay, this is what that knowledge does for me. Okay, that's what understanding is. Now, based on my knowledge, and based then on my understanding of that knowledge, okay, let's say, let's, let's say for instance, if we went to the book of Proverbs and we looked at uh, the subject of alcohol, I know what alcohol is, right? I know what the Bible calls an alcoholic, a drunkard, okay? I know that. But understanding is looking farther at, at Proverbs and saying, this is what happens to a drunkard. This is what happens to those that drink. This is the, the penalty that they have. You know, we can go to Proverbs and we can look at, you know, the man that's on top of the mast and, and the man that wakes up and doesn't know where he's at. And and we can, that is understanding. But then there's one more, and it's called wisdom. Wisdom is saying, all right, I know what a drunkard is. I know the facts. I know what a drunkard is. I know what alcohol is, okay? The, and the Bible gives us a description. Uh, uh, Look not upon the wine when it is red, when it moveth itself aright in the cup. That's knowledge. Understanding is saying, I understand what a drunkard is. I understand the penalty for that. Wisdom is saying, okay, I know what it is. I understand the end 
of that road, wisdom says, I don't think so. I don't want that. A foolish person says, I understand. Because a foolish person is not simple. A foolish person knows the facts. Okay? Listen, you can't, you can't look at society and not know what alcohol does. But at some point, you may even understand what it does. But you still choose the opposite. That's called a fool. That is a fool. When you know and when you understand and you still choose to go against the principles of God's word, the Bible says that you are a fool. Wisdom is saying, all right, I know, I understand, and I'm going to make the right decision. That's wisdom, okay? That's you making the wise decision based on the word of God, okay? So we've got those three different things as we gain this knowledge and as we have this knowledge, okay? So we've got this, we got this, these three different things. Um, in a very real sense, the knowledge that we get, remember I, I said we're going to talk about hearing or seeing. The knowledge that we get is the hearing part. That's hearing, all right? I know about this, but seeing would be the understanding part, all right? And wisdom, we'll talk about wisdom maybe later. Um, but these two are very, very important because it's not just about knowing things. It's about also understanding those things. Um, Job, Job, all right, you guys can be seated. Job knew God. If you look at the first couple chapters of Job, Job was a very religious man. He made, the Bible says he made sacrifices all the time for his children. I believe if Job was in our uh, society, he'd be a very faithful church going, a very faithful giver, a very, very involved. He knew God. He knew God. But listen, folks, knowing God and having a proper understanding of God are two different things. Because, you know, the Bible says the, the devils also believe. You could, you know, we talked to a lot of people on visitation. Uh, by the way, the young people finished up, they finished Linton today. So that's a blessing. We, we got all the way through Linton. Um, and, you know, you knock that many doors as, they, as what we knock on a Wednesday. You talk to a lot of people that know about God. And I'm not even saying that Job wasn't saved. I believe that Job was, you know, Bible Bible says he was an upright man, one that feareth God and hated evil. Okay? And so we, we have that about Job. I believe that obviously Job knew about God. He worshiped God. He conducted his life based on the principles of God's word. In many ways, he was a very righteous man, and he defends that fact. He defends the fact that the calamities that have come upon him are not a result of sin. If you listen at the, if you go to the arguments of his first friends that came to him, not the last one, but the first few, they all basically said, Job, you must have sinned someplace, and this is punishment from God. And Job the whole time says, no, I've not, I've, I'm righteous, I've done good, I'm, I'm doing all this. But in Job chapter number 38, something interesting happens, okay? God starts talking to Job. God starts speaking to Job. And I would, we're not going to read the next four chapters, three chapters tonight. I want to encourage you, maybe tomorrow in your Bible reading, I want you to go through those chapters. And you ought to listen to what, what God is telling Job. But chapters 38 through 41 is Job standing before God and God is talking to Job. God is putting into perspective the position of Job and then the position of God. You know, folks, in all reality, it is a humbling thing to stand before God and to really see who God is and who we are. I, I've said it, I said it when I was when I did the adult Sunday school class. A Christian life properly lived is a proper understanding of my position and a proper understanding of God's position. You know, if you can always understand where God is and where you are at you can live your Christian life pretty well. You know what happened to Satan, why he got cast out of heaven? is because he wanted to be like the most high. He want, it's like what pastor's been talking about. What's the, what are we fighting the spirit of the Antichrist? Because man wants to be their own God. Man wants to decide their own decisions. Um, but when Job realized this, and if you'll look at, at Job chapter number 38, 
God keeps asking Job these questions. Job, were you there when I created heaven, when I created the world? Job, did you put the boundaries on the ocean? Job, did you set the stars in the sky? Job, did you do this? Job, did you make the horse that's ready for battle? Job, did you make the ostrich? Job, did you make the unicorn? Super Chad, was a unicorn real? It's in the Bible. Although the coolest thing that God asked Job about, what chapter is that? Um, uh, chapter 41. It's this thing called a Leviathan. Now, there's a lot of speculation. A lot of people, they have... They're like, well, it's a crocodile. Uh, if you read this description, this is not a crocodile, okay? Uh, the crocodiles don't do what this thing does. Breathing fire, never seen a crocodile do that, all right? Um, leaving uh, fluorescent, uh, there's a name for it, phosphorus trails in the water, uh, crocodiles don't do that either, okay? This animal, whatever this was, God spends a whole chapter basically t describing this one animal. And what, why did he do that? To put Job in his proper perspective. Okay? Um, tonight I want to encourage you not to just hear about God, but to see God. Not just hear about God, but see God. Go to Job chapter number 42, or go to Job chapter 40 first. We're going to see Job's reaction to all of this. And then we'll go to where the verse that I really, God kind of spoke to my heart about. Job chapter 40, the Bible says, More of the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? He that reproveth God, let him answer it. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Listen, listen to this. Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay mine hand upon my mouth. Once have I spoken, but I will not answer. Yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. You know what Job's saying here? I'm sorry. I opened my mouth and I shouldn't have. I tried to defend myself and I shouldn't have. And you know what? God, God goes right back into it. He says, gird up your loins like a man. Here comes another round. Okay? And that's basically what he's, he's giving him. Job's perspective and God's perspective. Now jump over to chapter number 42. Job chapter 42, verse number 1. The Bible says, Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. Now listen to this verse. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore I abhor myself, and repent in dust and ashes. Listen, folks. I'm afraid that many times in my life, I've, listen, I, I grew up at Blessed Hill Baptist Church. I grew up sitting in the same pews that you folks are sitting in. Very, very much literally. Young people, I grew up, you know, okay, it's a different era, but it's the same thing. I grew up sitting on the front row. I grew up sitting right there where Daniel was. My mom and dad sat behind me. <laughs> I grew up sitting right there. I grew up at Blessed Hill Baptist Church. And you know, the thing is, is we grow up, when you're in a good place like this, you grow up hearing with your ear. But hearing with your ear and then really coming to the realization of who God is and having a relationship with God is two different th things. It's having this knowledge, but not really understanding. Okay? It's having that knowledge, but not really knowing who God is and not really having a relationship with God. Uh, tonight, I want to encourage you not just to hear about God, but to really see who God is, all right? To really see who God is. We hear about God, but do we see God? You know, this is what Job did. Job knew about God. He even said that. I've heard about God, but until God spoke to him out of the whirlwind and goes through three chapters of telling Job who he is, I don't know that Job really honestly 
had a proper perspective of who God really was. You know, I talked about that star a while ago. And there's a reason I brought that star up. I don't care about the star, right? But how many has ever been to a planetarium? Okay. If you haven't, uh, the Creation Museum has a great one. It's very much God-centered. Okay. I don't care about the star. But when they take you, and they do it on their whatever they do it, but when they take you from where you're living and say, this is where you live, and then they blow it up to, okay, this is the United States, and it's like, wow. <laughs> and then it's like, this is the United States in the world. Oh, that's cool. This is the United States in our solar system. Where's, where'd we go? This is our solar system in our galaxy. And this is our galaxy in our universe. Then you really start to understand how small you really are. When you have a proper perspective, not, okay, it's knowledge when you know about something, but when you have a proper perspective, it changes the way you feel about it, okay? It's like, wow, I am, and God cares about me. God knows, you know, I'm getting less and less, but God knows how many hairs I have on the top of my head. And God does that for every person on this world. It gives you a perspective of how small, but how big God is. How small I am, but how big God is. Okay? We hear about God, but do we see God? Let me ask you some questions. What have you seen, seen God do in your life? I'm not asking you what have you heard that, what have you heard a story that Brother Don Mowry has told about what God did at Lesso Baptist Church? What have you seen in your life? What answer to prayer have you had? Listen, in the last month, a specific, no, I'm not talking about, Lord, thank you for this food. Help us nourish our bodies. Amen. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about, and we, I, I fall into the vain repetition. You know, we just pray the same thing over and over and over and over, and it becomes very commonplace. When was the last time you prayed a prayer? And saw God answer that prayer. You know, we get prayer chains, and I'm very thankful for the prayer chain. But when a prayer is answered on the prayer chain, I don't know if it was my prayer that God, I mean, it was because I prayed for it. But it could have been Brother Tom's prayer that God answered, not mine. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, I'm thankful for it, and I pray for things. Okay. But when was the last time you had prayer answered? And what, what prayer was answered in the last month? What great thing have you seen God do in your area of ministry at Westside Baptist Church? Many times we hear about the glory days. Well, remember when we had this? Remember when we ran this on the bus? And remember when we did this? But then we hear about it, but have we ever seen it? That's what Job's saying. She said, Job, Job said, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now... Mine eye seeth thee. We hear about God's provision, but have you seen God's provision? I wrote this down. Getting away from God first comes when we stop seeing God. You first must stop seeing, then you stop hearing. And that's just common sense. If I'm walking, I can hear somebody. You know, if I'm walking on this side of the building and somebody's on that side of the building, I can lose sight of them before I can lose hearing of them. And many times we lose sight of who God is, and then we, start, we stop hearing about who God is. Go to Judges chapter number 2. Judges chapter number 2. Look at verse number 7. The Bible says, And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being 110 years old. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Timnath Harris, in the Mount of Ephraim, on the north side of the hill Gash. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel, 
And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. What happened to them? They stopped seeing what God did for them. And it just became a history book to them. Now, I'm all for history, and I think once you stop learning, you know what's the saying? Those that don't learn history are bound to repeat it. Okay, I believe in reading history. But what about living history? What, what history are you making? I'm not talking about going and making a big name for yourself. I'm talking about seeing things that God has done for you, you personally. We hear about good marriages. Oh, they've got a great marriage. They've got a good marriage. But do you see a good marriage? You hear about it. Well, you watch people in the church. All right, Baptists are great peakers. That's what pastor always said, all right? And you watch people in the church. You know, I, I always watch Brother Charles and Miss Ruth. You know, they were kind of my, I didn't really have grandparents around here a whole lot. So growing up, Brother Charles and Miss Ruthie were my, you know, kind of adopted grandparents. They counted money with my mom and dad for a long time, a long time. And I'd play here at church, but we were always the last ones here. And at some point, we'd end up moseying our way back there, and there they were. And I'd always watch them. And you, sometimes we hear about good marriages, and we have good marriages here at Blessed Baptist Church, but do we just hear about it, or is that something that you want to see? All right? Um, this is your marriage. What will you do with it? We hear about great youth groups. Well, remember that youth group that we had? We ran 40 young people in our youth group, and and we had, you know, we had 50, 60 kids that went to teen camp, and we did this, and we did that, and we had, you know, we had great youth revivals and stuff. Yeah, we, we, you hear about it, young people. But is it something you're going to see? Listen, and I've told you this before. This is your youth group. This is your chance for your youth group. Okay? This is it. What are you doing with it? All right? This is yours. This is your chance. We hear about great bus routes, but do you see a great bus route? Uh, folks, almost every guest preacher, listen to me, almost every guest preacher that we have come here says something along these lines. You don't realize the great pastor that you have been given. And you know what? They're right. We don't, we, and we know it. We have the knowledge because we're taught that. But we don't see it. We don't see it. Okay? And I wanna, I'm, I'm going to give you some very practical things in here in just a moment to help you with that. You don't see it. You hear about how we have a special church here at Blessed Hope Baptist Church. But you don't see it. Okay, yeah, I go here all the time. I hear it, I, I know it, but do you really see that God has given us a special place here? All right? So I'm going to give you three things here that will help us go from hearing it to seeing it. From going about hearing about God to really seeing God. Okay? First of all, it's a very simple. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. You know, greatness many times is sitting next to us and we don't even realize it. Okay? Greatness is sitting next to it and we don't realize it. It's very true that many times we do not appreciate what we have until we do not have it anymore. I mean, 2020 was a great representation of that. We all, we all took the freedoms that we have for granted until, you know what? You don't have them anymore. And it's like, man, took that for granted. Okay? Open your eyes. You know, we are a negativity-driven culture. Kills me. I was talking to a guy at Bender, Bender Lumber, the other day about this. He's like, I just get, I turn on the TV. He saw I had a flip phone, which I am still a big advocate of the flip phone, okay? Amen. Amen. That's some, you know, I got the flip phone five, you know, something like that. Uh, but you know what? I am, I told him, I said, you know what? I'm blissfully ignorant. Because, you know, you turn the news on, tell me the last positive story you heard on the news. Okay, I get my dosage of news at McDonald's on uh, Wednesdays. That's the only news I listen to. It's Fox News for 20 minutes, and it's all I can take. 
Why? Because everything is so negative. They don't tell about anything good. I mean, we're talking about what, a, a fight breaking out in a school board meeting? Like fist fights, calling in the sheriffs. Where, what happened to our country? It's a school board meeting. But we are driven negativity. And so what, what has that done to us? Everything we look about, we don't see. I hate, I'm not trying to be a, you know, ultra optimist, optimist, optimist here. But we are always looking at the glass half empty instead of half full. You're always looking at, you know, we want to look at the other church member as, well, this is what they're not doing right. Well, what about what they are doing right? You know, I, I, in, a, in, my, in our marriage, you know, I find that if, if there's ever a conflict, like, you know, any friction, it's always because I'm always looking at what's not done right instead of what all, look at all this that has been done right. Okay? We are so negativity driven. But why don't we open our eyes? If you're going to see the good, you've got to open your eyes and look for the good. Okay? You got to look for that. Our culture is not just handing out good things. All right? You got to look at the good that you have. Look around you, folks, and see what God has blessed you with. I know you know these things, but do you see these things? Oh, I've got a good family. Okay, you know that, but do you see it? All right? Do you see it? When we see things, it puts us in a proper perspective of who we really are. Job saw who he really was when he saw himself in comparison to God. And listen, folks, what was Job's reaction? I am vile. I don't deserve to speak another word. Go to the life of Nebuchadnezzar. Remember what Nebuchadnezzar, when he saw himself in comparison to God, he knew who he really was. When Isaiah, if you go to the first little bit of Isaiah, he said, uh, I saw the I saw it high and lifted up, and then said I, Woe is me. Woe is me. You know, when you start seeing who God is, it puts you in a proper perspective of who you really are. When you saw that when you see good around people, you're like, oh man, I should do better. <laughs> I yeah, I, uh, man, I really failed there. Look what they're doing. All right. I know it's not a competition, but you know what? I I've I uh, heard somebody say this. I'm not. Um, I'm gonna mess the. I'm gonna mess up what they said. Uh, I'm not gauged by those around me to be more like the one above me, but I'm challenged by those around me to be more like the one above me. And you know that, that was pretty good. All right. I'm not gauged by them. But you know what? They do challenge me. All right. I, I listen to Brother Ron comfort. I say, listen, I watch Brother Ron Comfort when he comes and preaches because he doesn't look at his Bible. Like when he reads a scripture and he says, go to this place in your Bible and everybody's like this, he's not. He's up there quoting the Bible. And he's what, eight, what did he say, 83? All right. And that puts me to shame. Makes me want to be better. Okay. Um, it's something you you got to see it. Um, so open your eyes. Open your eyes. Just look at what God has done for you. Look at what God has given you. Number two, test it. Test it. Number one, open your eyes. How do you go from hearing to seeing? You open your eyes. Number two, test it. You know, the scientific method. I don't, I'm not a scientist. Brother Young could probably tell you what scientific method is. It goes something like this, all right? If you think you got an idea, you test it. You make an experiment. If the experiment works, it proves that your hypothesis was correct. If the experiment fails, it proves your hypothesis was incorrect. But you don't, and here's where scientists, you know, they want to call themselves scientists, but they really don't follow that because they, they state all these stupid facts, you know, like the Big Bang Theory and all these other things when they've never observed any of it. Okay. Uh, anyway, that's a whole s side note. Um, but test it. Say, so, Chad, we should just do things by faith. Okay. Here again, maybe I'm carnal. But I, I like to test things. 
you know, I, I don't just walk out. Uh, I've been working on a roof. It's 12-12 pitch. And uh, I've got walk boards so I can walk on the roof. You can't stand on it. You slide right off. Um, so I'm, I'm walking on it. And you know what? I throw a board up there a, to walk on. I don't just, you know, grab two bundles of, of shingles and go trucking across it the first time. You know what I do the first time? Very gingerly step out on this board. What am I doing? I'm testing it. Why? Because I don't want to fall. Right? Okay, you spread your head. You just live by faith. Well, okay. A pastor said something the other day, and I thought it was really good. Living by faith is, is obeying Bible principles and trusting God with the outcome. I thought that was really, really good. All right. Um, go to Judges. Judges chapter number six. It should be close, I think. Judges chapter number six, we have the story of Gideon. We have the story of Gideon. And Gideon, Gideon here is confronted by an angel of the Lord, and he hears what this angel say. So look at that in verse number 22. Judges 6, verse 22. The Bible says, And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, because I have, for because I have what? Seen an angel of the Lord face to face. All right? And then it goes on through this, a little bit more, he he uh, builds an altar, etc. And um, but verse number thirty-six. Look at verse. So God tells you know when God first came to Gideon, He said, "Oh, thou mighty man of valor!" You know that. And Gideon's like, "Where? Uh, I don't see one." Verse thirty-six. And Gideon said unto God, "If thou wilt save Israel by mine hand, as thou hast said." Behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor, and if the dew be on the fleece only, and if it be dry upon all the earth beside, then shall I know that thou wilt save Israel by mine hand, as thou hast said. What did Gideon do? And we, and I don't know, some people want to dog Gideon for, well, you should just have the faith to do. Do you realize that Gideon's about to do an unthinkable thing right here? The Midianites were as grasshoppers. They were as the sand of the sea. And God says, I want you to take a few men and go try to, and you're going to wipe them out. Okay? I don't, I, I don't blame Gideon at all for taking this fleece and saying, God, if you're really going to do this, do this for me. And you know what? God did it. And, he got to, and then he's like, ah, okay, maybe it was just, you know, weird weather. God, if you're going to do this, I want you to do it this way. And God did it. And remember the, also, Gideon went and they heard the dream that the, the Midianites had, okay? You know what? Listen, young people, test your faith. Test it now. Don't wait until your faith is actually in the crucible of life to test your faith. Test your faith now. Listen, adults, test your faith now. Uh, pastors always said, you know, live on praying ground. And what does that mean? You know, you need to be able to go to God like that and have prayers answered. Well, I don't know if I could do that. Well, then work on it now. Well, you don't have to have that prayer answered. Okay? Test your faith. Uh, I think many times young people, maybe you don't want to surrender to what God has spoken to your heart because you haven't proven God in your own life now. Well, I don't think I could ever go be a missionary. You know why sometimes we don't think that? When God is honestly speaking to our heart, I don't think I could be a pastor. I don't think I could preach. Well, I don't, I don't think I could do that. You know why we don't think that God can use us in a big way? Because we've never allowed God to use us in a little way. Okay? Test God. Ask God to do the miraculous in your life. This is, hey, elementary Bible club kids, this is for you too. Ask God to do great things in your life. Uh, test it. You hear the missionaries come in, they talk about surrender, but you haven't yet, but you have yet to surrender your will in a little area. Test it. Try it. 
see if the principles of God's word aren't correct. You know, we want a good marriage, like I said earlier, but we don't want to follow the principles, all right? Test it. Try it, okay? See if it's true. And I think, you know, well, I don't tithe. I don't think it works. Have you tried tithing? Have you tried giving like the Bible says to give? I think if you'll test God, all right? The Bible says prove. The Bible uses the word, doesn't use the word test. The Bible uses the word prove. You know what he says? Prove me now. You know what God wants you to do? Test him. Try it. And go from hearing about the great things God does to seeing the great things God does. Test to see if what people say about our church is real. So, Berchan, how should I do that? I want to encourage you. I think everyone, everybody in this church ought to do this from time to time. You ought to find out where pastor's preaching, and you ought to just show up someplace at a youth conference. Don't let them know you're coming. Or you can. I don't care. I don't matter. Don't matter me. You know, why, why would you say that, Brother Chad? Because you need, remember what I said about men standing behind this pulpit and say that God's given us a great pastor. And God, glory be to God, but God has given us a great pastor. But we don't realize it. Go to a youth conference and see what God does at a youth conference. Go to a teen camp and see. And this can be true not just about Pastor Jerry, but about you know a lot of men of God. You know, Miss Natalie, Brother Matt went up to uh, Northwest. You know, and the the membership of a church reacts completely differently to preaching than that pastor going someplace else and preaching. I don't I don't know what it is. Prophet without honor in his own country. I don't know. But you know how you can appreciate your pastor? Is go see what God's doing with him. You know how you can appreciate your church? Go to another church sometime. Not locally. That's weird. I'm not, I'm not advocating. I, you should stay at Blessed Baptist Church. Go someplace on vacation. And you'll realize what God has given us here. What are you saying, Brother Chad? Test it and see. Okay? Test to see if God answers prayer. I challenge you. Pray, ask God to do something in your life that, listen, no one else knows about. Young people, ask God to answer a prayer in your life that no one else knows about. And do whatever it takes and cleanse whatever's in your life. I'm not talking about, oh, I need a new truck. Okay? Go get a job and buy one, all right? And maybe that's, maybe I'm harsh in that. But listen, I'm talking about you want God to work in your life in a certain way. Okay, start praying about it. And I guarantee God's going to, if you're serious about it, young people, God's going to start bringing things in your, to your mind that he says, hey, what about this? Why should I answer your prayer if you've got this in your life? And many of us at that point are like, whoa. All right, well, it's not that important. If it's important enough, you'll get rid of stuff. You know how people can kick addictions? Have something more important than the addiction. If it's, if it's, if it's your baby, listen to me, because I know none of you teenagers are there yet, but if it's your baby laying on a deathbed, and it's you get rid of this, or I'm taking your baby, it's amazing what we get rid of real fast. All right? What is this? It's testing God. It's proving God to see. Thomas heard that Jesus was alive. But you know what he said? I got to see it. Yeah, we dogged Thomas too. But he didn't. I think, I think it changed Thomas's life when he saw Jesus. All right? It changed him. Gideon tested to see instead of just hearing. Number three, and lastly, struggle for it. Struggle for it. Seeing it requires a person to do more than sit in a classroom or a church service. You, young people, you sit in here week after week after week, and you hear a lot of stuff. It's all good stuff. But when you go from hearing about God to seeing God is going to be more than just sitting at church and doing your time. 
It's going to be a personal walk with God. It's going to be getting in your Bible and you finding a study that you want to do and you studying it for yourself. Not because Brother Chad asked you to, not because your mom and dad made you, not because it's a school assignment, but because you want to. And then you start going from, okay, I have heard about God all my life. Now I'm starting to see who God really is. You got to struggle for it. Seeing it requires a person to do more than sit in a classroom or a church service. Genesis chapter number 32, we're told the story of Jacob. And this is when Jacob is fighting, is wrestling. Remember that? This is where his name is changed from Jacob to Israel. You know what he did? He struggled. Uh, go, go there. Genesis chapter 32. There's a verse I want to read. I should have written it in my notes and I didn't. Genesis chapter number 32. The supplanter becomes the prince of God. Genesis chapter 32, verse number 30. The Bible says, And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. What happened here? Jacob's life was changed forever. Jacob's life was changed. He went from being a supplanter to the prince. All right? Um, most of the time, when people go from hearing to seeing, they must do it alone. Serving God, young people, isn't going to be something that you do as a... I'm not saying you won't do it as a youth group, but really serving God isn't done as a collective. Oh, let's go serve God together. Serving God happens here by yourself. Yeah, other people may follow you, but that's your choice to make. Okay? Yeah, we go team soul winning together. But do you have the power of God when you go team soul winning? That's your decision. Okay? We're going to go to team camp together. But do you go to team camp with your heart prepared to hear and to see God? Or are you just going to go hear about God? Hearing or seeing. The seeing and the understanding requires effort. We want the product but we don't like the process. I want to have the power of God, but we don't want to make the sacrifice for the power of God. You know, our human nature just wants things handed to us. I don't think I'm going to have time, but one of the very first times I took the young men on a camping trip, and these are kind of rugged camping trips, not your typical camping trips. Um, I showed them how to take grass and make rope out of it. And you twist it, you take it, usually at least three blades, and you fold it in half, and you twist one side clockwise. You twist it counterclockwise over the other side and pinch it. You turn, twist that side clockwise, twist it counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise. Got the idea, right? You know what I just gave you? It's knowledge. It's facts. I gave you how to do it, right? And you may even watch me do it. Say, oh, I got this. I got this. Do you normally, guys that have done it, do you normally, Joe, did you get it the first time you tried it? No, he threw his in the trash. He couldn't get it. <laughs> it didn't look like grass. Uh, now, you have knowledge, but when you take knowledge, and you know, sometimes it takes a few tries with knowledge to actually understand what you're doing. It's like riding a bicycle. I made a bicycle. Some of you have seen it. Some of you have never seen it. Uh, I built, mod I, I'm, I like modifying bicycles. I don't know why. I just They're cheap. They're free. You can weld on them, typically. Uh, so I made a bicycle. It's, it's a backwards bike, right? So when you turn the handlebars to the left, like a bicycle, the wheel goes to the right. There's a gear on it. So when you turn the handlebars to the left, the wheel goes to the right. When you turn the handlebars to the right, the wheel goes to the left. In theory, looks pretty easy. Right? Okay. See this mat up here? For youth rallies, we have, I've done it a couple times, $100 bill. If you can take this bicycle and ride it, you have to turn one complete revolution. 
with the pedals, all right? Without touching your foot to the ground. From there to here. That's all you have to do. And you know, you know, I've told you, this is what it does. That's knowledge, right? You have the knowledge. But when you get on it, it is a completely different animal. Nobody, nobody has done it yet. Or Chad, can you do it? No. <laughs> Although that's one of those things that you really want to get good at and be like, what's your problem? Why can't you do this? But I've, I've, I've watched guys that can do it. Then watching them get on a regular bicycle is actually pretty funny. <laughs> because your mind develops certain patterns. Okay? Now, if I told you how to do this bicycle, and I told you how to do certain things, and you think you go through life, and, oh, yeah, I got it, no problem. When I get out in life, I'll know how to ride. And you know what happens? Crash and burn, crash and burn, crash and burn. Why? Because we hear, but we never really see. You hear about God, but you've never really applied God to your life as a young person. We hear about God as an adult, and we, we know about God. We know the rights. We know the facts. Pastor gives us the facts. And then we're like, oh, all right, I got it. We're good. Oh, yeah, I got notes in my Bible from last time you preached that. God, I'm good. But listen, hearing it and seeing it are two different things. Knowing it and understanding it are two different things. Hearing God and then seeing God. Let me challenge you. What are you doing to go from the hearing about God to seeing God? You know, Blessed Baptist, Blessed Baptist Church, every generation ought to have the memories of this is the miraculous that God did at our church. Every generation. They're all going to be different. But my generation ought to have memories of, wow, you remember that day? Somebody said this, when, you're, um, when, you're, uh, when, your memories, when your memories become more than your dreams, you've started to die. All right? Now listen, do great things for God. Don't just hear about God. Oh, this is what we did. What are we going to do? Pastor's, got, pastor's given us 20, 2021, 2022, 2023. He's given us three years of this is what we can do. And we can sit there and we can hear it, or we can be a part of it and see it. You know what Job did? He said, I heard with my hearing of my ear, but now I've seen it. Let's see great things from God. Young people, let see great things in your youth. Because then it will prepare you for doing great things when, when it's time for you to grab the handlebars and ride. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for this time. Lord, thank you for the way you worked in my heart, God. Uh, I needed, a, I guess, a slap in the face about a proper perspective of, of my relationship with you. And uh, Lord, this helped me. This helped me to uh, just trust you more, just to go from hearing to seeing Father, it seems like when we grow up in a good church like this and with good parents and good pastor and good Sunday school teachers and other leaders that we kind of just get hard of hearing and, and then we, we just hear things and we don't see things. And Lord, then when it's our time, we, we seem like we fail. Lord, I pray we'd raise, have a group of young people that just decide, God, I, I want to see things. I want to see you do things. Uh, help us have young adults my age and, God, in the next, next few years, Pastor's given us a vision. Help us to see those things, not just hear about them, not just to be a, a bystander, to be, be involved. God, I pray that you just help us, help us all be more involved, more uh, in love with you, Lord. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand to our feet as the piano plays, if God spoke to your heart. Amen.